nearly three quarters of the Earth's entire surface is water. Since early in the history of man, surface ships have sailed the seven seas. It is only recently, however, that man has been able to travel successfully below the surface of the water. In ancient Greece, Archimedes had already discovered most of the principles by which we now operate submarines. Archimedes' principle, also known as the law of buoyancy, states that if an object is entirely or partly immersed in water, its weight appears to be reduced by an amount equal to the weight of the water it displaces. This means that an object has a certain weight when weighed in air. But the same object, when weighed in water, always registers a reduced weight on the scales. To explain this principle, let us imagine the water to be divided into horizontal layers. The weight of the water in layer one presses down on layer two. Layers one and two together press down on layer three. And so the pressure steadily increases as we go deeper. When an object is submerged in the water, the various layers press against the object with a force equal to the weight of the water above. Thus we see that the pressure on the object is weaker in the upper half and stronger on opposite sides of the object are opposing each other. Therefore, they may be subtracted to find the net result. When this is done for the entire surface of the object, we can see that the upward forces overbalance the downward forces. This net force is called the force of buoyancy. It is acting upward in opposition to the weight of the object. Here we have three objects of equal size but of different weights. Since they displace equal amounts of water, their buoyant forces are alike. This object made of steel weighs more than the water it displaces. Therefore, its weight is greater than its buoyant force and it will sink. This is called negative buoyancy. But if the object is made of water or some material of the same weight as water, the buoyant force just balances the weight. If not disturbed, it will neither rise nor sink. This is called neutral buoyancy. If the object is very light, for example, a sphere of air, it is lighter than the water it displaces. It rises and floats at the top of the water. This object has positive buoyancy. The solid steel object is always heavier than water. There is no way we can change its weight, but we can increase its buoyancy by expanding it into a hollow sphere, filling the empty space with air. Now the sphere displaces more water, and the steel and air together weigh less than the water displaced. The force of buoyancy is greater than the weight, and it rises to the surface. Displacing some of the air with water makes the object heavier. It will go deeper in the water. When we add just the right amount of water to make it weigh the same as the water it displaces, our object will submerge completely and stay underwater in a state of neutral buoyancy. In this state, it is sensitive to small forces. With a downward push, it will go deeper. With an upward push, it will rise. Adding more water makes it sink to the bottom. When we remove the water, it will rise to the surface again. This principle of buoyancy is the first principle by which a submarine works. By controlling the forces of weight and buoyancy, the submarine can be made to rise and dive.
By admitting water into the tanks surrounding the inner hull, we can make the submarine dive below the surface. The submarine can operate underwater in a state of neutral buoyancy. Forcing out the water gives the submarine positive buoyancy and it will rise to the surface. The buoyant force on a submarine acts as if concentrated at a single point, the center of pressure or center of buoyancy. The center of buoyancy is the center of the space which the vessel takes up in the water. This brings us to another important principle for a submarine operation, fore and aft balance. The principles by which a submarine is balanced were also discovered by Archimedes and are usually called the laws of the lever. Let us place weights at the ends of this lever which is supported by a pivot. If the two halves do not weigh the same, it will not balance. To keep the lever balanced, the weight must be shifted so that both halves have the same weight. In a submarine, the force of buoyancy, acting through the center, takes the place of the pivot. Then, for example, with too much weight placed forward of the center, the weight acting down and the buoyancy acting up combine to give the vessel an angle down by the bow. With too much weight abaft of center, these forces make the vessel stern heavy. To keep the vessel balanced, its weight fore and aft of the center of buoyancy must be the same. The total weight of the vessel acts as if it were concentrated at a single point. This point is called the center of weight or the center of gravity. Therefore, to ensure fore and aft balance in a submarine, the center of weight of a submarine must be on the same vertical line as its center of buoyancy. Now consider another kind of balance. In cross section we see a completely submerged vessel with the center of gravity below the center of buoyancy. The vessel lists or tilts by the application of an external force such as the sea. In this position the deck is lowered while the keel is raised. But the weight, acting through the center of gravity, pulls the keel down. And the buoyancy, acting at the center of buoyancy, forces the deck up. The vessel comes back to an upright position in which equilibrium exists after the external forces are removed. Thus, when the center of gravity is below the center of buoyancy, both forces keep the vessel upright. The lower the center of gravity, the more stable is the submarine. This is called a foreship or transverse stability. In a vessel floating on the surface, the center of buoyancy being the center of the submerged part only may be lower than the center of gravity. But if the vessel tilts, the center of buoyancy changes its position in the hull because a differently shaped part of the hull is now submerged. Thus, the buoyant force still acts together with the force of gravity to counteract the tilt and bring the vessel back to a level position. We have demonstrated the main physical principles by which submarines operate. Positive buoyancy keeps the submarine afloat when its weight is smaller than the buoyant force. When water is admitted into the tanks, and the weight of the submarine becomes greater than the buoyant force, the vessel has negative buoyancy and submerges. At neutral buoyancy, the weight and the buoyant force are equal and the submarine will remain at a certain depth. To keep the submarine balanced fore and aft, its weight must be so distributed that the center of gravity is on the same vertical line as the center of buoyancy. A thwartship or transverse stability is assured 
when the center of gravity is below the center of buoyancy. The weight acting downward at the center of gravity and the force of buoyancy acting upward at the center of buoyancy keep the vessel in an upright position. Through the application of these basic scientific principles in the construction and operation of our submarines, it has become possible for us to navigate the seas on the surface or below with efficiency and safety.